Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the Synthesizer Fundamentals course. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the harmonic series and why that's so important for us to understand. So here we go. We have the harmonic series, and we have to ask ourselves, what is the harmonic series? We may have heard that term somewhere, maybe, I don't know. Well, basically, it's a series of harmonics. I know, really, right? That's, that's all we're going to talk about. But we ask ourselves then, what are harmonics? And simply put, a harmonic is a whole number multiple of the fundamental frequency. So if you have a sine wave and that sine wave is playing at 100 hertz, that sine wave is the fundamental frequency. Now, the fundamental is the lowest harmonic that determines its pitch. And if we multiply the frequency by whole numbers, then we get harmonics. So for example, we have the first one is going to be 100 hertz times one, which is obviously the fundamental or the first. And then we have the second one. So 100 hertz times two is going to be 200. 100 hertz times three is going to be 300, and I think you kind of, <laughs> you get the point, and <laughs> so on, so on, so on. So you may have also heard other terms such as partials or overtones or things like that, or maybe something is in fact just inharmonic. What does that mean, right? So with all these different terms, they're going to be similar, but they are actually different from one another. So partials are all oscillations of a certain waveform. An inharmonic partial is simply something other than a whole number multiple of the fundamental. So maybe something like you have 100 hertz and you multiply that by 3.6752375, that would be inharmonic according to the fundamental frequency. And overtones are any partial that are over the fundamental frequency. And we can also have subharmonics, which are basically harmonics that are going to be below the fundamental frequency. And we know that a sine wave is a pure tone with only one harmonic. So then we think about the other waveforms, such as a triangle and a square. And these waveforms are all made up using the odd harmonics. So one, three, seven, so on, five. Obviously, I skipped that one. But you know what I mean. The odd harmonics are going to be determining the shapes of triangles and squares. And the difference is going to be the amplitude in these harmonics. So the harmonics of a triangle waveform are going to fall off much steeper and faster than they would of a square wave. So let's take a look in Bitwig and see how this looks and how this sounds. So I have a couple interesting things prepared for you guys. So this first one that we're going to look at is something I built inside the grid, and I call this adding harmonics to kind of show this process off, right? So if we open this guy here, we can see this craziness going on over here. So basically, we have this sine wave oscillator, and its output is going to be going, if you follow this purple line over here, it's going to be going into this Chevy Chev thing right over here. And this is a way we can target different harmonics. And then this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, right? Multiplying the fundamental frequency. And then out of here, we're going to go into an attenuate. And out of the attenuate, we're basically adding these all together. And what's interesting is on all of these different attenuate knobs, I've mapped these down here to these knobs, right? So what we can do if we play a note here, we just have a sine wave, right? And if we zoom out and we have a little oscillator here to look at stuff, we have a sine wave. And we can start bringing up the second one in here, which is the next multiple. We can bring up the next one. So as we keep adding on to these things, this is basically adding more and more and more of these. So I've basically mapped these up to eight or to uh, 16, which is kind of interesting here. So this is kind of how that concept works, right? So if we look down here, the harmonics one through 16 are going to be integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. So whatever the frequency is, you know, we're going to multiply this by one, which is the fundamental or the first harmonic and two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. If we're building a triangle wave, it's going to be all the odd ones as well as a square wave. And then the saw wave is going to be all of them. So with that being said, if we close this guy out and we hop into pigments over here, which is going to be also a good way to kind of look at things. So we have pigments open right over here and we're here on the harmonic engine. Now take a look down here. We have an EQ and then we have an oscilloscope. So if we play some notes for this guy, we see that this is going to be a saw wave as we can see down here. And there's all these harmonics here. Now what we can do is if we bring down these partials, So there's only one, now it's a sine wave, right? And as we start increasing these, there's two. And four, five, so on, so forth. And as we start adding more and more of these, we get our sine wave again, which is actually really cool. 
So now I bring this to the left and we look here, it says 100% odd. So if we're only gonna use the odd harmonics, which write one, three, five, seven, nine, so on and so forth, that's gonna build up the square wave. As we start adding the even ones back, it goes back to a saw wave. And we can even see the harmonics down over here in this EQ. Which is very interesting. So we have basically that going on. And down over here, we have another polygrid. So if you open up this guy, this is just a very simple demonstration of that as well, right? We play some notes. We have our saw wave. If you look here, once we start turning this, notice the harmonics change as well as the waveform. Or we can bring this all the way down and just add these here, which is just gonna be a square. So here in this offsetter, we kind of have a choice of how we want to control these harmonics. So here is just gonna be a square, or we can do a triangle. And if you notice, once we have a triangle here and we start pushing the square, what starts to happen? We're kind of just pushing the harmonics that are already there. If we did this with a saw wave, we're adding different ones that aren't there, but if we do it with a square wave, we're just pushing what is there. So basically, like I said before, the square wave and the triangle wave are, is the same harmonic content. The difference is going to be the amplitudes of those different partials. So in the next part of the course, we're gonna be diving into the pulse wave and how important of a waveform that actually is in sound design. And the takeaway of this episode is to really understand what the harmonic series is, what is something that's inharmonic, what are overtones, what are subharmonics and things like that. And a big takeaway is to realize that the sine wave is just a pure tone. It's one tone by itself. But as we add more sine waves based on the multiple of the fundamental, then we're gonna start creating that harmonic series, right? So 100 hertz times one is 100. That's gonna be our fundamental. 100 hertz times two is 200 hertz. That's the next harmonic up and then three and so on, so on, so forth. If we keep doing that for a very, very long time, we're eventually going to build a saw wave. And if we remove all of the even ones, so leaving one, three, five, seven, nine, so on, so forth, that's gonna end up with a triangle or a square wave. And the differences of those two are gonna be the amplitudes of those harmonics. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next episode.